Hi, this is Rick. Uh, Happy New Year. This is an extension of the previous video where I was doing some bass ambience. Um, in this particular video I have um, added a few more features like these parachutists that, that are coming in. You might notice that they're using the default parachutes which normally when flown by AI generally sort of spiral around in random directions. Well, you can see they're pretty synchronized now. That was really tricky to do. And um, I've also added a couple of um, some guys who do random exercise over here. Now that looks quite cool. It's not really appropriate for this mission, but I just thought I'd add it in and then uh, I'll remove it later on. Then we've got our guys still running around the base. Must be quite tired by now. These guys, they basically do three different animations. Um, they do some martial arts training. They do press-ups and they do squats. Uh, randomly, when people kind of move into a trigger over here, that, that triggers the, the process. Okay, I'll show you how that works. Okay, first on the parachute guys, um, start off with them in the sky with the simulation disabled so they kind of essentially just hang around in the sky. Have a little trigger here that fires at the moment every 10, you know, on 10 seconds um, and the condition is true so after 10 seconds this trigger will fire. Um, I'll show you this bit of code here that basically handles the movement. Um, All right, this this little bit of code that I've put into an editor just simply to show you, um, this code is in the trigger. So if what the first thing it does is it switches the uh, simulation on for those objects that are hanging in the parachutist that are in the sky. Parachute, parachutist one, two, and three. So they start falling. The natural animation when they fall is to go into a free fall parachutist animation. And I put this into non-scheduled environment. Um, give them a backpack, a parachute. Um, open the parachute. Um, add some smoke, red, white, and blue, to each of them. Um, attach the smoke to the to the vehicle because once they've got a parachute, once the parachute's opened, um, which it does after three seconds, um, vehicle vehicle parachutist is not equal to the parachutist. In other words, the vehicle itself is the object that you attach the smoke to. Um, and then it runs a loop. It checks to see whether or not the parachutist uh, is above the ground um, and then on each frame this is to try and smooth the process out because essentially this is a brute force uh, process what I'm doing is um, enabling the simulation I'm disabling simulation on the the vehicle in other words the parachutist the parachute itself with the parachutist uh, as the driver I disable it I give it a bit of downward velocity and a bit of forward velocity in the x-axis set the direction to 90 it's not strictly speaking necessary uh, given that uh, and I do this and then I enable the simulation just briefly on each frame so it is a little bit frame intensive or processor intensive this so it's not something you would do unless you were trying to um, you know unless just it's the base animation and then once people are out of the base this process is all complete um, 
So it does this for each of the individual parachutists. I could probably put this into a for each loop, but I'm uh, just keeping it separate at the present moment because it's quite important that the enable simulation or disable simulation, enable simulation, there's a, a very brief process, a very brief amount of time that that happens. In the process, it actually moves the object on each frame a certain distance. Um, and it essentially does that for each of the parachute vehicle parachutes uh, or vehicles and then it checks and there's a lot of double checks here because the terrain height is sometimes miscalculated and then you end up with an object on the ground and it keeps giving, being given a forward velocity so what it does is it checks to see whether or not the um, vehicle parachute in other words the guy's out of the parachute the parachute is has been removed and he is now the vehicle para equals para and it checks each one of these and then if that's true it then unassigns x in case and this is unnecessary as well but i have found some really weird timing issues so this is a double double protection it makes sure that it's out of the parachute strictly speaking that's a load of nonsense because this if, he, if this condition is true, then this condition makes no sense. But don't ask me why, but it seems sometimes there's a small, a small timing process simply because this is within the on each frame. So this is like a kind of a double check. It then uh, removes the smoke, deletes uh, the smoke from this array, smoke one, two, and three, which are the individual smokes that are attached to the individual parachutist. Uh, it then corrects any um, height difference when when the unit is on the ground it makes sure that the height above the the ATL setting above the land is set to zero so make sure that they actually are on the ground because sometimes they seem to kind of either go through the ground or they sit just above the ground um, it then also sets the velocity to zero to ensure that the object doesn't keep moving when it hits the ground. And it does that for each of the parachutists. And then after the on each frame loop is completed and this while loop is completed, it then does another check to make sure that that's the case. Again, it's probably completely unnecessary, but I found some really weird things and I actually couldn't get it to stop moving. So these are probably mostly redundant and I think it's dependent on frame rate and load on the processor and a whole lot of other things so um, as I said quite a lot of this is probably not necessary but I just couldn't get it to stop moving occasionally it depends on the terrain and the map uh, if some some areas on the map there seems to be a height slight height difference and it doesn't calculate the fact that the objects on the ground and then it you get weird things like guys moving through buildings uh, without moving their legs and so on. So essentially, anyway, that that's what the uh, little script does on this trigger. Okay, so that was a little parachute demo. Then over here we have these guys doing some exercise. Trigger calls a script called exercise every 35 seconds and the reason it's 35 seconds is because the one animation which is the karate animation takes 33.3 .3 seconds so every if someone keeps walks into this trigger it's a repeatable blue force anyone walks in any blue force uh, uh, sorry if a player walks into this area and blue force then and he's blue force which obviously will be um, the script gets run and, um, and the script does the following. Okay, it's called exercise, strangely enough. Um, okay, so these are the exercises that potentially um, could be run. I'm actually not using all of them because this one knee bend, I've taken it out, knee bend B, which is kind of down here is too fast and it looks a little bit stupid so I've kind of I'm ignoring that but I've left it in in the meantime in case I use a different animation or I can find one um, so basically it's an array and I've repeated some of the objects because I might when it selects randomly from this group it may select 
I can choose the proportion of karate animations versus knee bend A or push ups that it does. So you'll see there's like three push ups, and I think there's three karates, and knee bend A, there's two. So then it uses a standard um, a switch do construct, um, and it basically looks for whatever exercise is currently what that variable is set to once the select random uh, function is run and then uh, it just picks the various animation to run based on that switch so in this case it's uh, case karate assuming that was selected 33.3 uh, seconds it play moves so in other words it's a smooth transition to this animation which is a karate for each of these objects I do it twice because I want to, as I mentioned in the previous video, I don't want them to look like robots, so they're slightly out of sync with each other. So I've chosen a slightly different uh, group and I've delayed these guys by a fraction of a second. Knee bend A, similar process. Uh, that's an animation that runs 5.813 seconds. Um, oh yes, and I forgot to mention that this is uh, remote execs, the, the 3D sound, so you can hear the car that's a karate guy seven he's the guy in the front of the group and uh, he says uh, he plays a 3d sound same thing applies for each of the different animations in this case um, knee bend a synchronizing and making a sound file that that corresponds to the movement and timing which is like a huge amount of work it took uh, nearly a day to do that um, for each of the for all of these animations um, push-ups same thing, process, same process. Um, there's a slight delay because they do this loop a number of times. Uh, in this instance, they do it three times. Here, they do it four times. Uh, and then that's the one I'm not using, actually. Knee bend. Oh, no, knee bend B is the one I'm not using. Um, you'll notice that there is no delay on the karate because that's one long animation of 33 seconds but this guy has only is only a 5.813 second animation so I loop it four times with a duration with a sleep you'll notice it's slightly longer because of the 0.2 difference so that they so that the sound sequences more or less accurately it's actually slightly out it should probably be a 0.1 second so it averages the time delay because it gets slightly out of sync if you run it for too many loops. Um, but it's a bit tricky given that these guys are out of sync with each other uh, to synchronize the sound perfectly, but it's close enough. Uh, yeah, so that's basically what the, that's the exercise script. Okay, thanks for watching. <clears throat> and um, I'll be posting uh, a mission soon, or, or the actual mission itself. I'm gonna be running that, uh, that is a video very shortly. I just need to um, complete a few more things in the mission and then um, I'll do a video also of the making of the mission. So I'm going to remove some of these ambient anims because these ambient animations are not really suited to this mission at all. They might be useful on some other mission I do. Anyway, um, thanks a lot for watching and uh, hopefully see you next time. Cheers. Please subscribe by the way. <laughs>